We're nominated for a major award. Who is? We are. We are? No. No, we're not. We're not. But we're, we know people that are. We're most definitely not. <laughs> oh. I didn't see the clock running, so. Martin, it's a major award. What's a major award? What we're nominated for. We got nominated? No, but people we know are. Who? Sai? No. Not you either. Who got nominated? Your brother. For what? Phil. What you Best podcast for? in the history of man. Hey, do what? Yeah, and I'm we're not nominated. We're not nominated. <laughs> well, why didn't we get nominated? Hey, that's right. I'm going. Hey, I'm I'm reporting this to HR. <laughs> yeah, this is okay. I mean, come on now. Who's like, doing the nominate? Well, I think it's for a more serious podcast. I don't know that the podcast in the leisure category necessarily qualify. But what do your you brother mean don't qualify. Well, we're we're kind of hey. weird. Um, but your brother who's also kind of weird, and Jace, who's definitely weird, and Al, who's normal, um, they were all nominated unashamed for the K-Love Fan Awards Podcast of the Year. Well, well congratulations yeah. there. Sadie won it last year. Did fan you? choices. So well, I think we should tell the people to go vote. So maybe we'll get it next year, though. Like I see no, a trend. I'm not going to hold my breath. No. But it is a fan choice award. <laughs> so the reason I'm saying this is because we do want you to vote for Phil. Jason Al and Unashamed. Go to KLoveFanAwards.com. It's going on now till May 26th. So you got a few days, but just do it now. Do they have a write in category? Can we write ourselves in? I'll look while we continue okay. on this podcast. If, if we can't, then I'll vote for Phil. Then we'll vote for Phil. But KLoveFanAwards.com, vote for Unashamed. And just to be clear, I'm voting for Phil. Yeah, I'm fine with it. I'm voting for Al. Oh, and okay. Phil. There yeah. you go. I'm and, with you. Uh, and Jason. <laughs> <laughs> it is pretty cool that they're nominated yeah, for is. an award to think well, yeah. that this all started all these things started kind of by happenstance well they so. do actually put a lot of work into their podcast so do we are you kidding man we're on like episode 243 we put in the the my we've sat here for four days or something now like that's wild man how long have they been doing it i don't know how long have they been doing that Longer, a long time, longer, longer than, than us. us. I mean, they, they About do. three times longer than us. Hey. <laughs> Quick maths. <laughs> Ooh, song of the year. They're Ooh. not on that. Oh, I was gonna say, did we get Harry Christmas on there or what? Oh like, man, I feel bad for the people going up against the chosen. Oh, that's unfortunate. I'm just gonna hand it to them. Um, oh, here it is. So, is who are they up against? Going. I'm just curious. I'm trying to figure here out we who go. we need to. Candace Cameron Bure podcast. We're, well, that's up. unfortunate. She's really nice. Yeah, I'm voting for her. I'm just kidding. Vote <laughs> for unashamed. Um, the Proverbs 31 Ministries podcast made for this with Jenny. I think my wife listens to that one. The Alyssa Childers podcast, Dream Big with Bob Goff and friends. So if you just if you just hey, it's the last guys. if you scroll through the podcast category, actually go which, to the website, which one of them scroll them all the way down, and vote for Unashamed. One of those looks markedly different than the rest. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, one looks more like the chosen than anything else. <laughs> <laughs> Just dudes with beards. Ah, oh, that's fantastic. Looks like a beard commercial. Well, hey, good for them. Good for them. Go vote for them for yeah, real. Absolutely. Go support us. Let's have some fun. I plus. Hey, there's Zach Williams. He's that would be fun. cool. That may actually be one way where Phil would leave the house to go accept the award. I doubt it. Doubt it. Al will go accept it. Yeah. He'll, oh, can you imagine the vest he's going to wear for that? <laughs> Golly. <laughs> Unbelievable. It's nice even thing. funnier because his daughter's in here today. So that is we do, And his grandson. So we have a live studio audience in here today with Alex and Corbin. So if we make fun of your – you call him Pop, right, Corbin? Pap. 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 Okay, if we make fun of him, just laugh with us. It's oh, fine. It's all in yeah. good fun. And, okay. and he'll fire back, so it's all cool. It's, Corbin, do you own any vest? No, he doesn't. Okay, uh, he's not trying to look slimming. He's a very thin <laughs> young man, so um, we're not trying to. Al's wearing society's camouflage, so it's fine. <laughs> it's uh, it's all good. I can't laugh too much at this. <laughs> <laughs> society. Uh, I love good one. it. Yeah, women call it a corset, men call it a vest. It is what it is, it boys. Is. Um, but anyway, no, Johnny D. Look, last time we were here, you were. You, you were going on your birthday celebration to report. That restaurant's good. Freddy's is good. They got really tiny French fries. Oh, so that means you're crispy. Mm -hmm. And I can eat French fries with the best of them. I once thought about entering a contest. I haven't yet, but I could win. Um, and yeah, I just crushed French fries. Really? It was awesome. 
So the but burgers it's very were crowded. The burgers were they okay. were hamburgers. They were hamburgers. Ice cream. Good. Because it says burgers and ice cream on the they sign. They should put so. French fries on the sign. Okay. That's what you want to go get. That okay. I can hey, there you go. That's an honest opinion. And yeah, we went. It was fun. My mom and dad came. Big Dave let me go home from work early. That was probably the coolest part of my birthday. <laughs> Didn't even tax you for it either. No, he said, Hey, why don't you go ahead and go home today? I said, What? Well, speaking of work, was that the, since you left early? Is that the day that y'all y'all got shoplifted or what? Because y'all y'all went y'all went viral with a little post. The Honey Hole Outdoors went viral with a little Facebook post around what, the Monroe nice. West Monroe area um, for for thievery. It, it did, who wrote the post? Me. You wrote it. <laughs> yeah, was, so you were big mad when you read. It. I was okay, mad. all right. Because yeah. you. That was one of the most passive aggressive posts I've read in a while. So <laughs> it was like low key, this cat needs a therapist. But um, yeah, no. So we're at, we're at work, and you know, shoplifting happens in retail. It shouldn't, but it does. And you know, I that day was a little annoying anyway. Um, it was a, it was kind of a weird vibe. And then I go to put a rod and reel out, and I see just a rod with. Uh, the zip tie on it. I'm like, well, where'd the reel go? Huh. The reel's gone. The reel has left the building. And it is 170 bucks. And so then I'm angry. <laughs> and I have cameras because it's 2023. 20, um, so I start watching the cameras. And this very nice man who asked a lot of questions was apparently stuffing his pockets the whole time he was asking questions. And you see him. He sneaks back to the... He had a friend. Whispered in his ear. Coast is clear. He sneaks back to the back. Cuts it. Pockets it. Goes and puts it back. Then he goes to the bathroom, starts rummaging around uh, in our storage part. Stole something out of there. Okay. Uh-huh. Really? And, and so now I'm angry. <laughs> and what you should do is call the police. But I was too mad to call the police. So you just took it to the court of public opinion. So I said, well, we'll just see how the people of West Monroe feel. And I was like, oh, 100, 200 people will see it. I, I think we do have like. 15,000 followers on Facebook, but I, I I wasn't planning on doing this to the boy. So I got a picture of him, and he's now hanging on the wall of shame up by the security stuff um, with <laughs> Exodus 2015, Thou Shall Not Steal, written beside his face. <laughs> um, on the poster, wanted. Oh, yeah. Uh, Carter <laughs> made a wanted poster of him, too. Um, anyway, oh, so then I get a picture of him, and I'm like, I mean, what do we do? And I said, you know what? I am mad. I'm posting it. So I just wrote him a letter. Explaining to him, I answered all the questions he had asked while he was in the store with his pockets full, and then I let him know he's not invited back unless he returns the reel, and then probably still, I don't want you to come back. Um, and I thought that'd be it. Well, uh, the city of West Monroe is awesome because they don't play that game, is what we found out. And 1,200 people shared it. Oh. Like, find him. Who is he? Oh. Uh, who? Well, uh, would you like to hear the numbers? I would. Yeah, I, I am. I because this is one of the nosiest areas in America. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, um, so if any of you are <laughs> over there shaking his head, he's the guy, by the way, that had the police scanner the last time we were here. So, well, and, and here's my other deal. Um, I don't know why you would steal, but just if you're thinking about like, because this dude woke up like I'm gonna go shoplift a few places today because they had a plan and it just yeah. Uh. You will be found these days. It's really dumb to do anyway, but if the law scares you, and it should, um, and the court of public opinion, because 203,000 people have now seen this guy, according to Facebook. 42,000 people have clicked on it. Um, I was one of those. Yeah, yeah and I, I got 409 did. new followers out of the deal, so thanks, buddy. Um, <laughs> but yeah. It, it, it you can keep you real, huh? Yeah, you, you feel violated when somebody just takes something from you and is talking to you nicely. Uh. They're stealing right from under you. But then it felt good to know, like, we live in a town where that ain't okay. And 99% of people, it it made them mad for us. So did you find out who it was? Maybe. You got a name? That's tight. Uh, I don't know the exact number of people that sent us his name, but... It was more than 10. Mm -hmm. And it was all the same name? Mm -hmm. mm. And his address. Okay. He wrote I don't him know a if letter. I'm to say that. But the police, it, I dear turned thief. it up. Yeah. <laughs> dear <did>. thief. <laughs> no, I put dear sir. I was kind. And then I hey, ended I, it with love. Hey, I wrote it like it was. Dear thief. 
Hope you enjoy the reel you stole out of my store. Hey, you want to know the best part? What? I hope that sucker's right-handed because he stole a left-handed reel. <laughs> I hope he was so nervous and that he just... one of them that you switch. No, you can't there switch. You go. He there just you pocketed go. it. There you go. He just boy, pocketed boy. 170 bucks, and if, I'm sure he went to pawn it for 20 But if he did go fishing with it, he got out there and said... Oh. Well, he'll, just, hands don't he'll do he'll do what one of our congressmen did that fished with us. He'll turn it upside down and, and real backwards. And real backwards. <laughs> <laughs> He'd be over there doing this. Now this was a congressman. Yeah. Are you serious? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. No, I'm serious. Uh huh. Not everybody's a fisherman. Do it. Doing fishermen it. don't steal. Doing it just like it. They can't make it make sense yeah. the other way. I'm yeah. like, man, it ain't that hard. Like, how could you ever vote for a man? He did like not. That? He did not catch nothing either. Shocker. Okay. <laughs> oh man. So in in uh, one Facebook post, you got his name, his address. Mm -hmm. Well, and I'm not. Um, you know. No, I'm not asking you to put him on blast. Look, no, I'm, I'm not, not gonna put I'm him not. on blast. But I, I'm. He's already. That's already happened to him. Yeah. I so, feel like justice has been served. Yeah. And and you know the I don't know what's gonna end up happening. It ain't. It's a misdemeanor. I, I don't know the rules of shoplifting. It sucks. I know in California they don't do crap, but here in West Monroe, Louisiana, <laughs> I'm gonna let everybody know who you are, at least your faith. That way, if you go down the street, I mean, there's plenty of, I don't, I don't care if you're at Academy or Walmart, they should see you and say, oh, this guy, it, it was an operation. Factor's the first meal prep service I, I've used that I'm sad when the meal's over. Most of the time, I kind of got to like power through, you know, like, oh man, these this is supposed to be healthy for me. But with Factor, like I get done, I'm like, man, I could use one more of those. Those are good. But that's what they're there for. Keep had, you on the honor system. I had creamy so. Parmesan chicken and broccoli yesterday. Uh -oh. Absolutely. Tonight, so. I'll probably have ground pork and cheddar chili mac. And the app, man, it's so easy. You pick what you want, it shows up. Johnny D, what are you having for lunch today? Oh, I'm going to go have a spicy poblano beef bowl right there in the Honey Hole Tackle Shop because Ooh. I have it delivered every Monday. Oh, that one's good. It is good. That one's good. I already got my. I got five of them left for this week. I'm going to eat. I, well, tonight we're eating one for dinner because it's so easy. Yeah. You know, oh. we, we pop them in the oven. Nine minutes, boom. Already made for you. I've lost weight doing it. It's it's the most com factor is the most convenient thing ever. Plus it tastes Amen. good. Look, I I highly recommend any of the pork dishes. They are by far my favorites. But the chicken's good. The beef's good. Next week I'm getting chicken cheesy bacon ranch shredded chicken. They got ribs. That one. They ain't got ribs. Well, yeah. mm. they might. I haven't seen them. But look, if you're looking for calorie conscious options, try out this summer. Try the delicious dietitian approved calorie smart meals with around 550 calories per serving. So. If you want to get your beach bod back instead of the dad bod like we got going on here, you can do it. Just start, switch it over, get Factor. They're, you can eat Factor for the same price or less than you eat out every day. Plus, it's better for you. That is the cool thing about it. And no matter what kind of diet you're on, they got you covered, whether it's calorie smart, vegan and veggie, protein plus, keto, you name it, they have got something for you. And each week they've got 34 chef-prepared, dietitian-approved options, and there's always something new to try. Plus, you can add things like shakes, desserts, That'd be jerky. jerky legit. It doesn't matter. They've got breakfast bowls. You can add whatever you want to the deal. It is truly up to you. I mean, you can you can customize however you want. So if you want to budget this month by cutting back on takeout, use Factor. Like I said, it's the same price or cheaper a lot of times than takeout so it is it's humble and it's so much better for you this may get factor and enjoy clean eating without the hassle simply choose your meals and enjoy fresh flavor packed meals delivered to your door ready in just two minutes no prep no mess all you have to do is head to factormeals.com slash duck 40 and use code duck 40 to get 40 percent off your first box that's code duck 40 at factormeals.com slash duck 40 to get 40 percent off your first box Now, I've got a personal question to ask you. You're a small business man. I'm nervous. Yeah. No, no. Yeah, yeah. So yeah I, he's no, a small business owner. Yeah. No, no. This personally happened to me. Okay. Mm -hmm. I went into Walmart. Oh, no. Oh, here we go. Okay. He's not going to be on your side. Well, well, no, no. <laughs> no, no. Look. There's a rod over here. Okay. With a reel on it. With, with a reel on it. Yeah. Okay, now they, they, this was back before they had to start tying everything, locking everything down. So it was just a rod that was sitting in the, into the, you know, the reel was fitting into the rod, tightened up. So look, I look and I say, okay, I want this rod. So I took the reel off of it, set the reel down. Mm -hmm. Then I went to the reel counter 
where the reels were, and I put me a bigger reel on this rod. <laughs> okay, so I walk up there, put it on the counter, and tell me, ring that up. She said, the guy, I think it was a lady, not one, it was a man. He said, sir, that reel doesn't go with that rod. True. And I said, no, that's where you're wrong. <laughs> Untrue. I said, that's where you're wrong. I said, I want that reel on that rod. And I'm willing, hey, just ring it up, and then I'll pay you whatever it costs. You can't do that at Walmart. I could have made that Why happen. not? Because that whoever that was was mixing paint and mopping the tire floor 20 minutes before that. There it is. They don't know the difference. Now, I know for a fact that- Well, wait a hold it. Hold it. I even said, wait a minute. Whoa, whoa, whoa. This- you're telling me, no, that won't do. Get me your supervisor. Dun, dun, dun. Where'd that go? Because I want that reel on that rod. You're making, I, my first. You're well, making me the supervisor tired for all said, retail uh, workers. No, go put both of them back because, you know, take it off of it, put it back because, hey, they don't go together. Yeah, Walmart, they ain't going to do that for you. And me. I said, wait a minute. You're losing money here, you idiot. They ain't losing money. I'm Really to pay for this. Shop local. They wouldn't they wouldn't sell it to me. Yeah. I said I ain't coming to Walmart ever again. Well, Walmart until tomorrow. Place, yeah. <laughs> until tomorrow tell yeah, me Until tomorrow. But like if you came to me dollars. with that same problem, I would have said, Well, that's a two hundred and nineteen dollar combo that the dude stole. I can hey, sell, that's what I'd have done. The real hey, by itself is sell out, hey, it's gonna cost you three hundred and fifty dollars to buy this. But you can do that locally. You can't you can't do that with the big boys. Pay the man. Like you can't What's Why like? would they do something that dumb? It's my question. so I can exist, baby. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's even funnier? I you're talking about the zip ties on the reel. So like five years ago, maybe six. I don't. Whenever we launched Fin Commander, we did that deal with Zebco where they did a rod and reel combo with us, and they asked like, "Hey, can y'all go out and use them and take pictures?" And I was like, "Yeah, man, that's cool, whatever." So I went out using it. And I sent them to the marketing guy. Bob Bagby, good friend of mine now. He's no longer there. He's Hello, retired. Bob. But he sent me back a reply. I said, hey, these look great. Can you cut the zip ties off of the reel? And I was like, well, I thought they were there to, like, help hold the reel on, too. Like, a little yeah. added protection. He said, yeah. no, those are for thieves. So, like, in my mind, I've never even thought about cutting a reel off of a rod and reel combo. So I always thought, I was like, man, that's really cool. They put zip ties on here. Make sure it don't slip make out. Make sure it don't like, fall off. Your hand. Yeah. Like yeah. I never even, like the thought that that was theft protection from the factory never crossed my mind. <laughs> that's what's wild. I mean, that's where different people are in life. And like, oh, yeah. it just, I never had any idea. Of course, so then I had to go and retake the pictures after I cut the zip ties off. I just cut but yeah, I had no idea that that's what the zip ties were there for. Yeah, you need heavy. Uh, apparently, you need chains. <laughs> just chain it all up. Nah, not really. What well, that no, guy no. doesn't know is like if he would have just like if he's in the buying for cash, if he'd have went up there and asked your dad for, hey man, I need seventy bucks. Big day, be like, sweep the parking lot. I'll give you seventy mm -hmm. bucks right now. Maybe. And, I'll, I'll but I'm that. saying like he didn't have to go to that resort to get whatever he got from selling a stolen reel like yeah. um, that that's the well, problem like he needs like, to come meet big day friday night at cr like another, let's call it what it is another one is is duck commander some guy i'm fit to go home with some guy and he said hey before you come up to the place tomorrow you know run by academy or somewhere and buy me a duck duck commander a duck call oh yeah so i did you know careful and, when I got up there and handed it to him, he broke it out of the package and wouldn't blow. They had stole the reeds. The reeds. Which, by the way, if you, like, send a deal to us, we generally yeah, send. Yeah, give them back to you free. Well, we'll send you more reeds for the yeah. price of a stamp for yeah. the most part. Yeah. Like, yeah. Whatever it cost us, literally cost us to get it to you is what we charge. We hey, don't the make, next time I we don't a, make a penny hey, off of reeds. Like, the next time I bought a duck call, it took me 40 minutes to get it out of the package. Oh, yeah. Because they had stapled this thing. Just and the problem with duck calls, though, <laughs> that's the problem we run All the way into. around. 
Oh, we have to now, but the problem you run into is people like to toot on it one time to make sure it sounds like they think it's going to sound like before mm-hmm. they take it home. So it's like, it's a weird deal, but we get them back from Academy, from Bass Pro, from TP, for you, Max, you name it, that come back and they're either missing a wedge, a reed, like, and then they just return it and say it's defective. Yeah. I'm like, mm-hmm. you cheap rascals, all you did was took a 20 cent reed out of the thing. Like, we would have sent you those. Yeah. All you have to do is take the time to email yeah. or call our customer service. Say, I'm out of reach. And we are going to send them to you for the price of what uh-huh. it costs to get there. Yeah. We're, we don't charge you nothing for the material. Like, nothing. And Speaking of customer service, have you had the phone call about the Mallard Drake not making a quack? Oh, yeah. Phone calls, emails. It doesn't sound like a Mallard Drake. And people obviously very clearly don't know what a Mallard Drake sounds like. <laughs> I, I could not believe it yeah i've had i'd say 15 different occasions mm-hmm. phone calls over the years we got one back the other day a teal call said this doesn't sound like a teal i popped it out there kick, 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 kick. that's like sounds like a blue wing hand to me i don't <laughs> apparently we we have a misunderstanding well, of what I, a I blue was, wing teal sounds like. i wasn't the best so. at customer service anyway so no well it's hard whenever they try to blame something on you when it, it's very clearly not your fault well right but well, yeah. it went the customer's always right yeah, cu- it, it's up for size case yeah. that's what it was the customer guy, was wrong guy called phil phil answered the phone hello yeah Hey, you ought to be ashamed of yourself charging twenty dollars for this uh, Mallard Drake call. <clears throat> yeah, and Phil says, "Hey, whoa, 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 did you did you read the directions?" He said, "Hey, I've been you know duck hunting for forty years. I don't need to read the directions." <laughs> he said, "Well, hey, uh, go ahead and, and blow it for me then." Well, of course he blew blew a tin and whistled. He said, "See, it's just a whistle." And Phil said, "Hey, you still got the package?" They come in? He said, yeah. He said, well, hey, idiot, read the, read the directions. <laughs> he said, then call me back. You hung up on it. Well, he called back and said, hey, no, 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 I ain't read directions. Wait, this conversation ain't over. Phil said, hey, you're an idiot. <laughs> I can't help you. You're too stupid. If you won't read the directions. We have somebody else in charge uh, of customer uh, service here at Duck uh, Commander. <laughs> yeah. hey, to, yeah, to make nice. it work, Thank you've goodness. got a hum, a bass note. And Phil did it to him, and he said, what's that sound? He said, evidently, you do not know what a Mallard Drake does. Mm-hmm. He said, that was a Mallard Drake. Mm. Yeah, Mallard Drake don't go. Bang, bang. Yeah, he don't go. Bang, bang, bang. He goes. Are we going to take any breaks, or are we just going to go right through this? Well, one? I figure we just keep on rolling and let Hunter figure out where to put them in. No, Hunter, throw a break in there somewhere. No, let's take, and now let's take uh, another. Let's take a break. Look, if you want to get ahead of thinning hair, Nutrafol's whole body approach to hair growth, no drugs, no compromises can help you out. I wish I'd have known about it about 10 years ago before all mine just left the chat. So, But the cool thing is Brittany is taking it now to deal with the postpartum stuff. So, like, I didn't realize this when women have kids. Apparently their hair falls out. That's wild. So she had two of them. So you can imagine what she's going through. It's brittle. It's breaking. It's all over the house. But she started, like, now a month ago. And you can tell there are less, there are visibly less wads of hair in our bathroom, which is something I'm very happy about. Because uh, <laughs> them things, man, I call them spiders. Like, you just glance at them real quick. They look like little spiders all over in the corner. But that is a cool thing. Nutrafol is the number one hair growth supplement dermatologists recommend. It's trusted and recommended by more than 3,000 top doctors and stylists. Nutrafol's hair growth supplements use physician-formulated natural science-backed ingredients. It's drug-free. It's a patented technology so that you know that it's reliable and it's consistent and it's not going to compromise your sexual health. So, ding. That's what I'll say about that. Look, if you go to Nutrafol.com, you can take their hair, hair health wellness quiz. Could help you identify the causes of your thinning hair. They can customize a plan straight for you. It is that simple because Nutrafol targets the root causes of thinning hair, such as stress, hormones, environment, lifestyle, and nutrition. 
So you're taking care of the inside of your body the whole time while that helps take care of the outside of your body. It is a whole body wellness approach. Men show progressive improvement in hair growth and visible thickness after three to six months. But look, it's not just for men. They now have postpartum. They have everything. You name it, whatever stage of life you're in, they can help you out. It is really cool. You can take the first step to visibly thicker, healthier hair. For a limited time, Nutrafol is offering our listeners $10 off your first month subscription and free shipping when you go to Nutrafol.com slash men and enter the promo code duck find out why over 4,000 healthcare professionals recommend Nutrafol for healthier hair Nutrafol.com slash men spelled n-u-t-r-a-f-o-l dot com slash men and enter promo code duck that's Nutrafol.com slash men promo code duck Martin earlier we did a commercial for hair loss uh okay. that got me got me to uh I remembering am. what happened when Burley was here last week, I told y'all he was going to, he said he wanted to come train. Oh, he's been taking jujitsu. Right. So okay. after the podcast, he came up to our school. He had his beard tied up in a, in a little uh, bun. That's wisdom. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> here's, here's how it went down. Of course, Burl hadn't been training that long and, and new people are notorious for being dangerous because they don't have any skills. Therefore, they use their strength in, a, in agility, and Burl has much strength <laughs> and a lot of agility for a 62-year-old man. You got the strength. So me and him being acquaintances and friends and whatnot started out together. Five-minute round, okay, squared off. Well, this man reaches down and grabs me by my collar, stands up, Picks me up off the ground. Uh, th- th- this has never happened before. Now, there's guys in there. I'll that just can do say, it. this does not sound good. No. The, now, before, I don't want to kill the momentum of the story, but oh. are there cameras at your gym? No. Bad gummit. <laughs> no. But I wish so, I wish I'd have been smart enough to have somebody film the round. Oh, uh, okay. Sorry so, about that. Anyways, I, just, I uh, wanted yeah. to know if there was a chance I could watch this. Oh my god, I wish. <laughs> So, feet are floating. So I I'm immediately took my chin because I'm thinking this dude is fixing to slam me pile driver style. You know, Scott Steiner, <laughs> the Steiner recliner. I don't, you know. Undertaker. What the, a, like, yeah, yeah, the pile. Yeah. What yeah. was the Undertaker's? The, tombstone. Uh, tombstone. Pile, yeah. That was running through my mind. Yeah. Because he had me up eye level. <laughs> he was standing on his feet grabbing my collar and a lot of thoughts were running through my mind, but I took my chin and I'm glad I did because three seconds later, he slammed me into the wall. The wall? <laughs> the wall. Now, we, our, now granted our wall is padded. Okay. So he's, he, I didn't get a three point stance. He was standing up. He just took off and slammed me into the wall <laughs> and drove his shoulder in my forehead at the same time. He actually tripped and fell, didn't he? Well, it turns out he, he lost his balance. I was not aware of this. Yeah, yeah. I was, I was thinking, he's trying to kill me. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's literally, I mean, I, I've had people go crazy on me before, but not to this level. <laughs> and not from a man with the... Uh, Known as Burley. From Burley, yeah. <laughs> Strength. I mean, he's very agile for his age. Well, by the and way. a guy that you also consider a friend. Well, right, yeah. like, so, right. But yeah. there's been some, there's been been a little friction over the years, over, especially when he killed the breeder buck. Um, and I, you know, I'm not very tactful with the way I uh, come, no. come across sometimes. No, so, but again, why you're not in our so, customer so service? Did it daze you? Huh? Did it daze? Did you? it daze me? It yeah, almost slammed into a wall. It almost, what I mean, I was, with a two hundred pound man pushing. Yeah, if you remember how yeah. big Burley is, <laughs> oh yeah, I, I wish on the podcast. I wish Anna would have took a picture of that knot on my head. Uh, it's not went away now. I'm shocked it's gone now. But it, it was. Yeah, Stone pretty. had a diagonal raspberry across the front of his <laughs> yeah, head. He come in here the next day. He said, "Boy, do I have a story for you?" <laughs> yeah, don't mess and with I Burley. And I said, "I said save it for the podcast." <laughs> so. <laughs> But it's, uh, the way the whole thing started, I start out on bottom. He got top side control. I swept him, pull guard. He stands up, boom, into the wall, shoulder in the forehead. 
I immediately scrambled to his back and choke him as hard as I've ever choked a man in my life. I think that because you got three more minutes left in the round, right? Well, well, yeah, yeah. But okay. I ain't got there yet. I've already told you the story, but so <laughs> I, I choked him. He, he tap 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 tap. So he tapped, and uh, I looked up at the clock, and there was three minutes left. I said, "All right, Burrow, we got three minutes." He said, "Uh, uh-uh. uh, <laughs> I'm done." <laughs> I did, said, well, he did, he had already angered him because I was still upset uh, that he slammed me into the wall. I wanted, wanted. He was, he was yeah, gassed out. Revenge. He was gassed out, so I was fixing to get mine. It wasn't revenge. So, he was after slamming into the wall is probably against the rules. But huh? a, upon further review, he lost his balance and did not do it on purpose. That's and he's just so big, or, and he's so big that he just. That's what I'd have said when I got yeah. choked out too. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I asked him. I asked him. I said, "I've watched y'all and watched a lot of wrestling." I said, "I was surprised that more people don't do that." You're not supposed to. But there ain't many people strong enough no. to pick up another man just well, I'm just like saying, a sack of don't potato. know, but hey, I've watched bigger guys fight little ones. That don't matter. You know, oh, yeah. And I say, well, why don't he just do it? He's on top of it. Why don't he just stand up with him and then just crown slam but, him? Well, but like, well, I'm yeah, a big we, guy, but I can't yeah, even we pick up my we nine-year-old. We wasn't fighting yeah. for money. Huh? We wasn't fighting for money. This is just <laughs> well, training. I'm just training. saying. I'm just yeah. saying. Well, regardless of that. I was that, working, we're fighting for money. Okay. Regardless of that, picking up. A man, yeah, is hard. Oh, and, I don't care how strong you yeah. are. Uh, he picked me up like that's, I like I was a, ba- a bag of deer corn. And what do you weigh now? One seventy. Like, that's what I. One hundred seventy pounds of de- just dead weight. Yeah, yeah. probably that's, fighting against you. That's hard dead weight. Yeah, oh yeah. Like I was yeah. hanging all my weight on him. Yeah, just, Stone ain't helping. He ain't like here. Let me climb up to well, you. No, no, like, that's not. I'm gonna hey, lay back. Burley's uh, not uh, only yeah. big. You're not just. You're not just saying one hundred seventy pounds of just. Dead weight. Yeah. That's, That's got, 170 pounds of very well muscled oh, up. Yeah. And weight. look, for man, I think he's what, 61, okay. 62? Something like that. For his age, and everybody in there bragged on him. Well, he's, no, I, he's only been training, I think. That's two, why two I said when you meet a guy like Burley. Yeah. Yeah, you know, you're friends for life. Oh, yeah. He's extremely <laughs> his agile. His dad was the same way, just oh, a yeah. brute of a man. He's extremely agile for his age and size and extremely strong, obviously. Yep. But uh, but the reason I brought the hair loss stuff up, because me and Sage get there a little early, and I'll vacuum the mats. She looked at the mat, and she said, somebody had a cat in here, <laughs> a white cat. And I got to looking, and there were white beard hairs. Oh, Burl. <laughs> there, there, there had to be a thousand. On the wall? No, on the mat. <laughs> on the floor. Where and on, his, on his beard hairs had been ripped out. That's from all you boys choking him. Yeah. Getting up under there, getting them short hairs. Boy, that's the ones that hurt. But Burley left his mark in there, that's for sure. They made linebackers he, he, uh, different in the 80s. Oh, oh yeah. That's what, men, oh. that's what men were men. Oh, he's a man. Don't oh, ever doubt it. Oh, ain't no doubt about that. Though. I got him, but I had to pay the iron price. <laughs> Stone did. He come in here with that purple mark across the center of his forehead. I was, I was like, no, just wait. I don't even want to know, man. Oh, man. Bernie said, no, I, no, you're mad. I ain't going to go with the other three minutes. Oh, no, he just didn't have no gas. Yeah, he's, he's out. Si, do you remember growing up, you were poor, right? As a snake, I guarantee you. What if What if I told you back then there was a way you could get up to five hundred dollars instantly? Would you have done? I would have said you're a liar because they ain't gonna give me five hundred. But they're not a liar because that happens with our friends over at Dave. Oh. Sounds like Miss Kay and Willie could have used this back in the days, early days of Duck Commander Martin. Oh, I guarantee you, yeah. When we'd get paid on Friday and um, and she'd say, say, "Hold it till Friday." Well, hold <laughs> next it Friday. Yeah, hold it till next, next Friday. Yeah, hold she it just wanted to honor Friday. her commitment, but yeah, I mean. <laughs> You know, if if we'd have needed it back then, Dave would have been nice to have. Of course, the, anybody the can run five, into trouble and need a little extra spending money. And let's be honest, the up to five hundred dollars would have been like double my paycheck anyway. So, <laughs> right. But look, with Dave, there is no interest, late fees, or credit check. That means you can get up to five hundred dollars. That means anybody can get up to five hundred. Yeah. So if you need to fill your tank, That's get your car repaired, some break down. Yeah. Like we've all been there. You're getting a little bit of a buy and need a little bit of extra cash. Instead of having to ask somebody for it, you can just go to Dave, get it 
almost instantly, you know, depending on how you do it, what you choose to do, and you can finally tackle those expenses that have been stressing you out. Millions of people have already downloaded the Dave app to get the financial relief they need with extra cash. So if you're in a pinch and need some extra help, download Dave and think of it as a helping hand from the future you. We've all been there, need a little extra money. Dave can help you out. Download the Dave app from the App Store right now. Or you can go to dave.com slash duck. That's D-A-V-E dot com slash duck. Sign up for an extra cash account and get up to $500 instantly. For terms and conditions, go to dave.com slash legal. Instant transfer fees apply. Banking services provided by Evolve Bank and Trust. Member FDIC. Well, PBS. I've been watching PBS. There we go. Transfer. Right okay. I love it. They Uh-oh. finally come up. And look, it's wild Scandinavia. Hmm. Okay, the Scandinavian people are adventurous. And was Dane Jennings one of them? Huh? He well, it like showed one. the wildlife. No, no, it showed a little wildlife, and it, they've got 700 wild wolves, which wolves are on the endangered species, I imagine. There, yeah. Because yeah. I guess what, Alaska probably got them, maybe Canada. Montana, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. There's uh, a big, pla- there's a big places ba- that still got a few up. There's a big battle against man against wolf right now. Yeah, mm-hmm. but anyway, Care, careful where you stand on this. Then they go, and I, I was talking about the people of Scandinavia. They like to ice skate, but they like to do it. It's very adventurous. Okay, they do it on frozen rivers, frozen lakes, frozen ponds, and it's actually a very dangerous sport. Because they don't do it, you know, by yourself because you're liable to die. You do it in groups of two or more. That's good. That way you all die. No, no. Well, I'm just saying, <laughs> and it shows these people, okay. You didn't know ice skating Look, was dangerous? Well, I'm talking about, you know. Well, ask Nancy Kennedy. On arena, it ain't bad because it's frozen and it's like four <laughs> inches thick. You do it oh, on a boy. river or a lake, <laughs> okay, and you do it one, yeah. for that, hundreds that, of miles. Because look, it shows these clowns and they're skating. Yo, know, this lake's probably 200 mile shoreline. Was there anybody waiting in the woods with a tire iron? Well, hey, who knows? But I'm just, hey, look, at one place, and look, this, the sound effects on this was great because uh, every time they're lifting their skates up and going one way and the other way, you're hearing cracking ice. Uh uh-uh. uh. Mm. Yeah. Well, that's like all okay, them boys that shows ice. Them. That's them boys that ice fish and a bunch of. Well, no, no, because oh, it shows these guys going by. There's a log laying out there, and it's 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 water around the log, and ice on each side of it, and and they're not skating very far from the log, and I'm going, these people are nuts. Yo, they, yo, now. Why do you think all them people in the National Hockey League's last name got like three vowels in it, and they that long? That's where they all come from. Well, up there. that, and they all missing teeth. Yeah, they tough, man. Okay, from getting pucked in the teeth and uh, whatever the stick is they use. And probably from growing up at eight oh, years old, hit, hitting that log you just talked about. Well, I hey, mean, I, they, I, I, the Navy, baby. I yeah. said the magic word. They are adventurous race. Okay, yeah, I guarantee you. <laughs> <laughs> Hockey players. Because I wouldn't be skating on no lake out in the middle of it, okay? Me neither. But now what I have to give them, they had a lot of equipment. Okay, and you, when they're skating, they've got a pole. Okay, just in case they fall, break through, you know, a pole's about six, eight foot long. So, hey, it would keep them from going under, under and give me off. See, that's no, I but think. I'm just saying, he ain't lying. It, it's yeah. adventure. There it is. That's when I just. That's think, down. That's when I think I just uh. find something different to do. <laughs> so where do the wolves come in? <laughs> that was just an interesting. I'm just saying they like, and they like to do it because they, the fresh ice is the best. It's just turned one at a time. I like that picture of that. Cup, no, and that they they got the poles got there. a big sharp stick on the end of it. And yeah. they see how thick it is, and then here they go. But this ain't for just like a round arena. This is they're going, they're skating forty miles out in the middle of a river on the lake. So they they use ice skates like people here use bicycles. Yeah, mm-hmm. they just take our boats. Off. Yeah, our boats. <laughs> our boats with motors. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, that's why yeah. I said bicycles. Like I said, <laughs> hey, I'm telling form you, of exercise. Look, yeah. the sound effects was awful, awesome. Yeah, because every time they'd pick it up and lay it down, it was. The ice is cracking on them. 
And then a few times, okay, it shows they're doing it, and it's about that much water on top of the ice. Oh. I bet that gets So they're good. making a splash. And Did you ever see a Zamboni? <laughs> no. No? I didn't know if they smoothed their ice. But I'm just or... saying, they're adventurous. I don't you heard it here first, people. Well, when you live in, I will say this, it's kind of like up north here. When you live in places that are frozen in about six to eight months out of the year, you got to find something to do. Mm. That's true. You know? Oh, did I tell you about it? We went ice hey, fishing. How about staying in the warm house and just relax? Well, all those oh. people live in Louisiana, Texas, Mississippi, <laughs> Alabama, Florida. I mean, we there's some of us that have figured it out. Well, like, you know, our get buddy, away from air. Our buddy Tim up there, he's, he's into that sitting in the hutch ice fishing like grumpy old man style oh don't you know but uh, yeah. if you get three bites that's a good day that's a good day you got three bites and six beers that's it it ain't that's about it. it ain't about fishing <laughs> those boys they get out you've been away from your wife for drink for beer and get away from the woman that's what they're doing <laughs> they ain't, they're not catching nothing yeah see mine don't bother me that bad no, I just sit right there. Every the once in a while, when a big one come by and you catch one of the big ones, it's a hoop. Oh, that's right. Si was there, too. Yeah. I would love to see a Si ice fish. He did catch a big walleye when we were up there. The camera work was good. They had a camera that was on the bottom. And every once in a while, you'd see oh. if uh, they'd swim by and he'd look like a giant. Then when I would set the hook on him and think I got a big one, not that long. <laughs> big shiner. Shiner. Right. I said, boys, we use this for bait. I'd hope yeah. so. TM is one of the higher ups at Hummingbird and Minkota. So yeah. y'all should have had no shortage of equipment. Yeah. Like, yeah, we have well, I loved it. I we went out there. Fish finders. What? Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Uh, ding, ding. I faced uh, someone who ice skates. I faced ice skates. <laughs> uh, are, are we talking? I look at his. Look Apollo at Anton the, Ono? Or what are we talking? Well, I'm just talking about speed skating. How, how fast do they go on skates? Fast enough where it hurts when they hit. That one guy went 500 meters in 41 seconds. There we go. Miles per hour. That's eight meters a second. Long track speed skaters can typically hit over 35. Whoa. But that's Olympians probably. 35 miles per hour? On skates? Boy, if you better not fall. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> and you on something that? No, I'm out. See? Uh -huh. Another reason we should be nominated for an award. If you're going 35 miles per hour on skates, don't fall. Hey. Yeah. We're full of good advice. And you better be comfortable with Jesus if you do. That's right. You better have a good relationship with him. <laughs> yep. Because first you're going to freeze, and if not, if you not got a good relationship, it's going to go the opposite. Yeah. You're real gonna, quick. You're going to be real cold, and then you're going to get real hot. It's going to be a very confusing time for you. It, it just, you know. Oh, boy. How fast does the snow skiers go? Look at that. Downhill. Out. Jeremy Bloom? Downhill. How do I know so many Winter Olympians names? Because mm. you are still obsessed with a USA chant, and that would probably be USA. your best – best yeah. chance to get one <laughs> there's a lot of adventurous people on this earth <sighs> yeah they're all in the winter olympics yeah, bunch of nuts <laughs> bunch of nut cases there are every one of them how fast do skiers go yeah I, the fastest downhill no 162 mm. one thing nobody has ever accused. no normally they're going about 80 and can travel up to a hondo miles per hour mph whoa for our friends over in Britain, that, that's fast. you got to do some math there. We're not into climbing. That's, but that's the difference between an open and a closed casket. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's I was looking at oh. kilometers per yep. hour. That's it. The fastest oh. person ever on skis went 255 kilometers per hour, which would be 158.4 wow. miles. I've never even been that fast in a car. I don't really like going in planes, but that's the only time I'm going that fast. You're talking about insane. I've been that fast in a car, and I didn't like it either. Mm -mm. And I had a professional driver doing it. Don't mm. care. I don't like riding in the boat with Yeah, guys. and he was looking at us while he was doing it. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. That's a true statement. He, was, he never once looked hey. at the track. Warrior. Yeah. Well. He ain't even looking. He's talking to me, and I said, Warrior, keep which, your eyes on the road. Son. Which track was it? Dallas. What? Texas Motor Speedway. Yeah, that's, that's a pretty speedway. Speedway. Yeah. I mean, That's a pretty one, easy one to memorize. I, I rode with him a couple of them, so I rode with him at Talladega. He turned Turn left. left. Turn left. Well, he was Turn running left. 140. Yeah. In Dallas. Yeah, I rode with him at Talladega. So he was we, saying, "Well, I better slow down because it's fixed to blow the the light up the lights off the car." Yeah. He said, "The race people don't like it when yeah. I do that because <laughs> they got to clean it up before they can do the." show that's a true story mm. <laughs> people that like to go that fast are weird i've just never been an adrenaline junkie mm. i don't know 
I'd so. I'd prefer not to. That's adrenaline. insane. I mean, I guess my adrenaline comes from hundred miles an hour on a fish on biting snow? my cricket or my cork going under or a duck coming in the hole. But like going real fast and surviving, not your boy's thing. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> if it ends with and surviving, I'm out. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like I went I went on that rafting trip with Brittany and Wheeler and them, and I scared death the whole time. So I said that's the I difference like, between open and closed cabin. It is. Yeah, I, I just, I'm not an adrenaline yeah, That's what guy. the race driver told me when we was going 140. Because I asked him, I said, what would have happened if the front tire had blown out? He said, that's the difference between open and closed cast. And I said, hey, that wasn't quite the answer that I wanted. I, it didn't give me a warm, fuzzy feeling. And my favorite part is he said, oh, don't worry, we're not the crazy ones. He said the crazy ones are the ones that drive him drag racing cars. He said they're sitting on top of a controlled explosion. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Because nope. they're using nitro. They don't have gas. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he said one spark they're goes wrong. They're using nitroglycerin. He said one spark goes wrong in that hey, deal, and you ain't nothing but a black When the doctor tells me spot. I'm on my way out, I said, go ahead and fill it up, baby, because I'm fixing to break the world record. For speed? And then head, head me down the track. I'm going to be Bon Jovi. I'm going to go out in a blaze of glory, buddy. So you're saying you prefer closed casket at your funeral? Uh, I don't care one way or the other. <laughs> he said, I ain't going to need break, it. As long as I break 361 and a half mile. He said, I don't need it. That's what Sai said. Uh, 366. Mm. Why are we going that fast? Uh, Must be the world that's record. The record. 361 and a half mile. One, on one of them big drag wrestlers with the blown tires and the bicycle up front. <laughs> My favorite part is he knows it. That's yep. the coolest part of I, that whole. That's because he's serious. And they but, actually, hey, they actually pull five to seven G's. Well, when they're doing it. <laughs> let's pull our way into our last break. Right. We'll be back right after this. <laughs> All right, before we get to the email inbox, we got the regular old inbox, the 117 Kings Lane. Uh, we got sparrows in a hurricane. And the 71292. Uh, Ryan and Riley, we get we got invited to a whole bunch of weddings, so That's I'm just going to give them all a shout out. Two sparrows in a hurricane. I don't know what Good thing we got Dave, won't so make we can it buy them a gift. Will. Ryan and Riley say they listen to the podcast from the beginning. They're getting married in North Carolina in June. May you live and love each other for a hundred years. Is it tacky if we send all of them a bottle of W uh, sauce? A little bit. Oh. oh. Okay. But we can. I mean, it's a gift that keeps on giving. I guarantee you. Um, Bradley and Kimberly are getting married in August in Ohio. Mm. We didn't say this, though, did we? Oh, and then Ethan and Nicole are getting married in August in Virginia Beach. There you go. We're getting invited all you, over places. Sparrows in a hurricane, boy. I got one more. He's oh. love everywhere. That's graduation. Oh, Gracie's Gracie. graduating. Well, congratulations. From Ocean Congrats. Springs High School. There. Love y'all all, and hey, wish you the best. And we did this last week, like a small business. We did a small business highlight with our man with the kettle corn. I got another one. Mm. Skipper Seats. They are a small family-owned business. It's actually a cool deal. I thought that Brittany was kind of an anomaly because she always takes a towel when we go fishing to put on the boat seat. Yeah, you don't want to get wet. Well, these are these are towels. These are fishing towels. They're for your boat seat. Hey, you so, baby. And you know what? America. America. Hey, they're red, white. There, ain't there no you blue. go. So, you wear those during the Winter Olympics. Skipper red, Seats, white, another though. small business that is That's a it. supporter of ours, so we're going to support them. There you go. Anyway, Johnny D, what's in that inbox? How y'all want to go on it? I got a lot. I don't have a lot of questions, but I got some really cool stories. Okay, well, hey, let's hear them. And I think that's just like there's so many cool ones. Heaven forbid we, we well, tell cool stories. I mean, that's here's the what first we're known one. for. We definitely need uh, Stone's opinion. If it's this cool is from enough, we might get nominated. Nicholas, now this is not going to get us nominated. Oh, it ain't. Okay. Although if Jeff Foxworthy he's putting out awards, it might get us nominated. Okay, Nicholas, he's 22. He's from West Monroe, Louisiana, which makes a lot of sense. Mm. Uh, his best friend was cooking ribs over at the house. Uh, my man made his own smoker. Can you guess the two things he used to make a smoker? Oh, man. How much time do I have? This uh, is good. And he's from West this Monroe. He's from good. West Monroe. Are these like bizarre oh. things? Uh, Thank or, Redneck. So it's not a trash can. Uh, Thank Redneck. No, Filing mean, cabinet. No, better. Better than a filing cabinet. I don't like what, a filing cabinet. What do cabinet? two things a redneck ha- has? In their yard. <laughs> At the house. A toilet. Close. A bathtub. 
Okay. Best of one of them. Ceramic. But hey, this is a redneck, and he hunts. So what else is he gonna a have? Gun a gun safe and safe. a bathtub. That's it, and a bathtub. And, and there a, you got the next redneck smoker. And a T post is holding it all together. <laughs> <laughs> and he's from West Monroe. That's happening right here in our great city. Oh my gosh! Praise be. Redneck ingenuity, boys. I bet that's good. And I thought we were bad for having a bathtub in our yard growing up, but we had worms in it. <laughs> okay, that's it. That's where we always had fishing bait. He turned the bathtub upside down and just smoking stuff in the old safe. <laughs> I love it. I love it. And it's close by, so I'm a little curious if he rubbed some W sauce on it and bring it on over. I'd try it. I'm, hey. mm. I'd try gun safe barbecue. You think he's contacted the warranty department about that safe, said it's not fireproof? That's good. Okay, there you go. That's funny, boys. <laughs> Probably. Just curious. Um, okay, <laughs> and then bathtub. Mm. Here's, this one's cool. It's kind of had a rough beginning. Um, Caitlin emails in. Uh, her husband's name is Dallas. He's been a fan of ours for a long time. Uh, he met Phil and, Phil and Jace before. He had an accident when he turned 21 with a 12-gauge shotgun. Ooh. He's blind now. Oh. Um, but that's not really what she wanted to talk about because even though all that happened, this is what she wanted to say about him. He lives every day the fullest, and thanks God he's still alive. Um, he's killed five deer since that's happened. Oh, wow. Cool. Um, big fan. Uh, and he has just a great story in all that. And she wrote, it's a very long email that I can't go through the whole thing. Uh, and she said, I know this is a long email. And her husband doesn't know that she's doing this. But she wanted this kind of mo- – they're, they're listening right now. And it's going to – just a really cool story about how he didn't let something hold him back from still enjoying the outdoors, even though there was a terrible accident. So, Dallas, that's really cool, man. And your wife – Really loves you. Yeah. And you're an impressive dude. And Dallas, sure. my hat's off to you because you could have folded up and quit, but you didn't, man. Mm-hmm. That's, uh, that's yeah, cool. a lot of people can't get down it, and that's not. That's understandable. Under, so. Yeah, not understandable, so, but yeah, he, he kept going. He's killed five deer that's wild. since that. That's cool. That's awesome. And that happened six years ago when he was 21. That is cool. He's had a couple kids. Dallas, stay after him. That's what I'm well, talking hey, about. Hey, man. You got to play like, the hand you dealt. Yeah. A good deal. And then here's another uh, story. Um, not a story, but just kind of a prayer request. Uh, so me and Martin have shared our stories about the NICU. Size shared his story about the NICU. Um, Mackenzie emails in, and she said, wow, I get the emotions now. Um, her child's been in there for six days, hopefully going home tomorrow. Whoa, whoa. So that's a praise report. We'll be praying for that. Um, but she just wanted to say – thanks for kind of putting our stories out there because it is really tough. But she wanted to say, ask everybody, pray for that staff, pray for people going through that because it's something you don't really think about a lot. Amen. And it is a, I mean, what did you call it, Martin? The saddest place? Saddest place on earth. It ain't a fun place. It is. It is. Mm, it's misery in the flesh, man. It, it is. Uh, but it's full of cool stories and it is full of the best people that walk this planet that work that every day. So mm. my, my hats are off to them. And, uh, yeah, we actually just donated a bunch of stuff to the, to our NICU just because we had it left over. And I didn't realize a lot of those kids stay in there longer and run out of the clothes sizes and all that. So some of the stuff boys didn't wear and some diapers like bigger size diapers when they have to stay in there a little bit longer that they outgrew we just took up there and dropped off so but it's a really cool there's like a whole like clothing line for <clears throat> premature babies now and it's because of the work that they do because mm-hmm. you know back in the day those kids might not have made it yeah we took preemie clothes up there that and we now, had to buy for for ours and those all that people kind of are stuff. working hard every day up there and mckenzie just wanted me to give them all a shout out absolutely so that's cool yeah all right we got time for one more we're going to have to do it kind of quick. As long as it's quick, yeah. We'll do it quick because I think this is an easy answer. Daniel emails in. Um, he's wanting to be the spiritual leader of his house, and they're about to buy a new house. Um, he feels like they need to move out of state. His wife said 100%, I'm staying here close to my parents. <laughs> but he feels like the Lord's telling him that they need to move. So therefore, he's in a conundrum. So he needs advice. <laughs> And quick advice, but Daniel, I'll go ahead and go because I've read this before. Um, Jesus didn't serve by telling us all what to do a lot. It wasn't a leader by telling us all what to do all the time. Sometimes he just served people. 
he got down and washed some feet, mm-hmm. which probably wasn't on his like favorite thing to do list. And your wife might need help from her family. And you say you got a good relationship with them. So you might be thinking this, but her being adamant about living close to her parents, Stone does it. I do it. Yeah, that's a fight you don't want to fight, really. No, I, I would just, on that regard, I would yield to the wife mm-hmm. and see, yeah, I, like Johnny D said, wash your feet for crying out loud. And that doesn't mean literally get down and wash your feet, bro. That means figure it out, figure out what it is of why she's wanting to stay. And why, you know, I mean, it's fine. Like the the cool thing is we live in a world where moving out of state or staying there doesn't keep you from doing anything you want to do with the gospel. Like you're connected through the world in two seconds. So like you can be a leader in the gospel um, right there from where you're at right now. Mm -hmm. So like, I don't, not, not, I don't know what the draw is to get out of there, but. I would leave you with one little phrase. Let there be no divisions among you between you and your wife. Hmm. There's a reason she wants to stay. You might need to explore that. And I'm sure there's tons of details that we don't know about. 100%. So absolutely. um, so that's why I just, man. With what we got. Yeah. I'm, yeah that's I'm, a tough one. I'm staying. I'm yeah. going with that other verse in there of uh, love your wife as, as Christ loved the I'll church. I love his church. Yeah. yeah. That's what I'm going with. So whatever that love needs to be to show, do it. Do that, it. That's, that's where I'm sticking. And that is how you are a spiritual leader. Work, work it out. All right. Ready for a Bible verse? Yeah. Let's go with John 10.10. Instead of Exodus 2015, because thieves suck. Um, But we got hope. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. But I have come that they may have life and have it to the fullest. No matter what's happening to you, you know, you might have something stolen from you. You still got Jesus on your side. And, you know, that's way better than anything else you could get. Are you scared out there? Be safe. (laughs) <laughs> We're coming for you, and so is Facebook. Watch out for the wolves. Oh, he's talking about the skiers, not the thieves. The skiers or the thieves? He said the skiers. Oh, I thought you said the skiers. <laughs> no. You're hard to understand. Oh. I don't know what's happening. Oh,